but I didn't have the elephant yet. So later on, when I got the elephant, I went back to Tangle Forest, but I had to look for that boulder, and I was like, crap, I don't remember where this boulder was. What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And today we are going to talk about a game. This game is called Shante Risky's Revenge, The Director's Cut. Now I need to let you guys know that I was sent this game. This was sent to me by Wayfor, the publisher, developer, so shout out to them for letting me review this game. Let me give you a backstory on Shante Risky's Revenge, The Director's Cut. It is actually the second title of the Shante series. I already have the game for the PS4. Yeah. <laughs> the title, Shantae Risky's Revenge, was first launched on the Nintendo DS in 2010. And then in 2014, they made Director's Cut and had that added to PlayStation 4 and Steam. Now, in the year 2020, it is available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and Windows 10. The difference between Shante Risky's Revenge and Director's Cut is 1. Improved Navigation 2. HD Character Portraits and 3. When you finish the game, you unlocked Magic Mode. Remember when I said that this is the second title of the Shante series? In the previous game, Shante first encountered the character, our arch nemesis, Risky Boots, and defeated her. So the second title is Risky Boots Revenge. It makes sense. This is a revenge. This is a following. It's a story. The plot for the game is Risky steals a powerful lamp, and she needs to unlock it with three seals. So what Shantae does is she goes out and takes those seals before Risky Boots gets them. Shante has to travel across Sequin land because three people have the seals. They're called the Barons. Each one likes to collect antique items and these seals are apparently antique items and they each have one. So Shante has to go to all over Sequin land to get them. This is a side-scrolling Metrovania puzzle platformer. As Shante is traveling all over Sequin land, she has to travel from left to right. But there are going to be some parts of the game where you can jump forwards and backwards. It's not going to be obvious. There's going to be a board on the ground, a square board with lit up arrows pointing forward or back. There are going to be some places Shante isn't able to explore normally from walking or jumping. She's going to have to use three types of transformations that she attains throughout the game. A monkey, elephant, and a mermaid. All of these transformations are hidden in the game in either dungeons or places that aren't easy to get to. This is where the Metrovania part of the game comes into play because Shantae can't really get to places unless she has that animal transformation. And later on, each animal transformation will have an ability. So for example, the monkey will be able to latch onto the wall and then dash and latch onto another wall. This is going to be important to be able to cross different areas that have deadly falls. And this also applies to the elephant and the mermaid. Players won't be able to get to places unless they have the animal form and the ability. Shante by herself in her original form, she attacks by whipping her hair at enemies. Players will later be able to purchase hair cream to strengthen the hair whip attacks along with magic attacks and upgrade those also. Hint, you are going to have to eventually get those magic attacks to progress in the story. In order to purchase these magic attacks and upgrades, you're going to have to defeat enemies 
and acquire the jewels, the gems, which they drop. Collect that money so you can buy that stuff. All right. For the upgrades, you're going to have to get Magic Gem. Magic Gem is not purchasable. You're going to have to find those throughout Sequin Land. A lot of them are hidden. <laughs> and like I said before, you're going to probably need to use those animal transformations and abilities to get to them. Remember when I said there's going to be squares with glowing arrows indicating forwards and backwards? You're going to see these boards with the glowing arrows indicating that you can jump forwards and backwards in town and in Tangle Forest. Tangle Forest is one of my favorite areas because it just looks kind of creepy, yet it's bright in its 2D pixel art form. <laughs> And we encounter one of my favorite characters, Rotty Tops. She is a zombie girl. And she likes to talk about how she wants to eat Shantae's brain. Like, there's, there's a lot of humor in this game. And even though I really like Tangle Forest, you can get lost in there. Especially if you have to backtrack and go to dungeons or unlock dungeons. And you have to go into those dungeons and get things like, for example, abilities or the magic jam. When I first was in the Tango Forest and I had to get certain items, it was easy, you know, bing, bang, boom, done. But there were areas like there was like this huge boulder and I knew I had to destroy that boulder because there is something underneath there. And in order to destroy it, I need the elephant. I need the elephant's like little smash rock move. But I didn't have the elephant yet. So later on, when I got the elephant, I went back to Tango Forest, but I had to look for that boulder. And I was like, crap, I don't remember where this boulder was. So I was going like all over Tango Forest, going forward and backward, forward and backward. And finally I found it. And then I got into the dungeon and it turned out I needed another ability to get to the treasure that was in that dungeon. I was like, oh my goodness. But you know, it didn't take that long. I mean, the game took me like seven hours to play. Okay, it took me seven hours. Plus some minutes. What? You know... <laughs> yeah, I was like, I know it's here, where is it? Because the map, even though the Rector's Cut does have improved navigation, the map still wasn't the best. It was so basic. And I'm like thinking, how did I play this when this was on the PS4? And I just had to remember, okay, this was the second title of the series, okay? This was the second title, and this was on the DS first, so okay, all right, all right, okay, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. But I just wish I had the ability to, like, have a little indicator, like, okay, I need to go back here. Fortunately, there was fast teleportation there is like these statues that have like a cute squid on top of it where it lets you teleport to all the other statues oh thank goodness they had that oh lardy those fast travels helped a lot let me tell you that especially in this desert area okay okay there is a lot of backtracking there okay thank goodness there is those fast travel statues, okay? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I did get lost a few times, especially when I needed to go back to dungeons with platforming. And I couldn't do those dungeons unless I had the animal transformation and the ability. That was frustrating, but that's where the Metrovania aspect comes in, right? You can't do stuff unless you have that ability or item, right? That's Metrovania. <laughs> if you ever get lost like I did, you can always go back to town and talk to the NPCs, which are Sky, Bolo, and Shantae's uncle. You can talk to them and they'll give you hints of where you need to go. Some people critique that they're a bit too vague. Other people said that it was fine. After you complete the game, you will unlock Magic Mode. And if you're wondering what Magic Mode is, it is a more challenging mode playing the game. But you also get to play Shantae in a different outfit. This outfit is from another title, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. 
the outfit looks really similar to Princess Leia from Star Wars. I like it. It's really cool. I played a little bit of it. It wasn't too challenging, maybe because I didn't play the whole game with it. But, you know what? I was still kicking butt, okay? And I was looking fabulous in that outfit, alright? And for people who felt like Shantae Risky's Revenge, the director's cut was a bit too easy. Maybe you'll like the magic mode and be like, okay, finally, a challenge. Let's make this harder. <laughs> And that's my review for Shantae Risky's Revenge Director's Cut. If you don't have a PS4 and have a Nintendo Switch and you want this game, it's only $10. And I think it's worth it. I mean, I already had it for the PlayStation 4, so go for it. Other than that, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments below and subscribe. I do stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If you want to come by, check it out, hang out with the community, talk about this game or other stuff, come on by. I also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. The latest episode I did was about Devil's Line. And... Uh, I was talking about how it was kind of like Twilight, yet kind of not like Twilight. I was like, I was analyzing this anime, okay? I was analyzing it. <laughs> I hope you guys liked this video. My name is Lehua, and this was the Superfina Channel's review of Shantae Risky's Revenge Director's Cut. I'll see you guys on the next one. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. Fist bump!